The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come here, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, and no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, Many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be driven out into the outer darkness where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, You may go as you have believed. Let it be done for you. And at that very hour, his servant was healed. Jesus entered the house of Peter and saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand. The fever left her, and she rose and waited on him. When it was evening, they brought him many who were possessed by demons, and he drove out the spirits by a word and cured all the sick to fulfill what had been said by Isaiah the prophet. He took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. Dear mother and family, the family of Don Rodrigo Dragon present with us, all those connected through the means of communication, especially in Guajira, Villanueva, but the entire world. I think that in the perfection of the Lord, the word of the Lord puts us in the right place to understand three hearts beginning with his own heart. We want to enter into the heart of Jesus. Jesus is the Good Shepherd. Jesus is the incarnation of the love of his Heavenly Father. And we can also say the incarnation of his Blessed Mother, his divinity and his humanity. And what is the Kingdom of God? The Kingdom of God is the love of God. And so finding Jesus, we experience what the people of Galilee experience, the healings, the deliverances, the forgiveness of our sins. That is, every place that Jesus enters, the kingdom of God begins to enter the heart of man. And we receive this kingdom of love through the sacraments. We contemplate that Jesus healed the servant of the centurion with one word. And then entering the house of Simon Peter, his mother-in-law, with one gesture. So word and gesture, word and sacrament. The Lord continues conquering us through the light of his word, the love of his sacraments. 
All of us want to enter into the kingdom of God, which is the same heart that the Lord announces to the entire world and makes it possible for each person to encounter his love and mercy in his word and his sacraments and in a new life. How great is the heart of Jesus. We also contemplate this encounter of Jesus to the centurion. What was happening in the heart of Christ? Finding a just man, a Roman centurion, contemplating this moment. I had to contemplate the memory of Jesus. What did Jesus see in this just man? That the Gospel of St. Luke, the Jewish people say, Lord, he deserves that you do what he asks of you. Why? Because this man dedicated his life to the poor and building a home for the Jewish people, a synagogue, so they could listen to the word of the Lord, so that they could be a people with dignity. We contemplate in the centurion a heart, a Josephite heart. Perhaps the gaze of Jesus in this encounter, he encountered a man who reminded him of his virginal father. This man that wanted to give everything to those entrusted to his responsibilities. Contemplate in the heart of Jesus, the heart of this just and generous man, a nobleman, the centurion, we also contemplate the third heart, which is the heart of Don Rodrigo Dango. I think that each one of us, reflecting about his life, his presence, we can say that we have known a true Christian gen Catholic gentleman through his presence, his words, and gestures, always had this capacity to elevate the dignity of the conversation that every person, rich or poor, could experience the elevation of his own dignity only with a greeting of Don Rodrigo. I personally experienced this gift of his heart, that he was always with someone who knew his own dignity, but without imposing it, and without pride, but with a noble and humble dignity. We can say a just and righteous and Josephite heart. All connected here today, especially in Guajira Villanueva, we have to contemplate the fruits of his life, contemplating at the same time the heart of Christ. And this encounter of Christ with the centurion, that in one way we can contemplate the life of Don Rodrigo. Rodrigo the son shared with me in one conversation yesterday why politics, he asked his dad. Because since he served as governor and senator, a business person, and Don Rodrigo shared with his son why politics because I have the capacity to elevate the dignity of those who have no voice and we need resources, basic resources for a life that's worthy and human. What simplicity and what depth. That is, I want to enter into the world of politics to humanize our world, to humanize our world with values, Christian values, which are the values, authentic values, human. In one year, as governor, his first year, he had the half 
that they might have drinking water supply in the houses of the poor, and he did it. In his second year, he wanted to to have natural gas, make it to the homes so that they could cook like we cook. That is, every time that you drink, they're having drinking water, cooking in the kitchen, are receiving, in one way, the legacy of Don Rodrigo Dango. Water, how simple, but what a need. Like the centurion wanted, that they wanted to listen to pray the word of the Lord freely. And he understood that his people, poor people, needed their resources and fundamentals so that they could live humanly as brothers and sisters. Why enter politics? To humanize the world. Today, in a special way, we are in this eighth day of remembering the work, the more visible work, because also there are many non-visible works, but the Educative Institute, Silvestre Dangontasa, that many of you and all, all, all connected know very well, a work that he began with the donation of the piece of land of his father. And it started with 40 girls, the poorest of the poorest in Villanueva. And he entrusted this responsibility to Don Rodrigo, a young man, a great responsibility for a young man. And now the Institute has 1,500 students. And they are students who have studied in the university. And now one of them already has a PhD. The humanization of her people through a faith that's lived in a concrete way, serving the people of Yanoya. I think that each one of us l listens to the word Villanueva. We have to remind Dear John Paul II, they wanted to build a Via Nueva Nova Juta in Pol Polish, but St. John Paul II understood that the Via Nueva, the true one, is the civilization of love infused with the power of the Catholic faith, live daily in a simple way, personally, in the family, in the government, in, in work, and for the humanization of the poor, like St. John Paul II had to enter there. Don Rodrigo also had this sense in his heart to serve the poor, so that Via Nueva, Guajira and Via Nueva could truly be a new way. Via Nueva means a new way in Spanish, a new people, a new culture. By, from that generosity of his heart, from his concrete acts to form the human person. And what is the fundamental work of the church in every family? to form the human person because the most the biggest resource in every city is the hum human person we contemplate in the educative institute the possibility of another christian value which is solidarity solidarity which is a new word for the majority what did St. John Paul II institute in the social doctrine of the church to understand how the church will co cooperate with men and women of goodwill to build a new civilization? This cooperation is called solidarity. Contemplating this in educative institute, we have here the, the support of the local government 
with the resources and all the classes. The National Department of Education for the Salary of the Workers. And also there's an, uh, another family that that after they graduate from the high school, they support, the company them in the university. And so therefore it's society, it's the government, families, students working together for the humanization of a new way. I think that we have to offer thanksgiving to God for this example of the possibilities that all of us have to enter into the world with our faith and help the Lord in his work of building a new way, a new civilization of love, where we're not afraid to share the faith and live the faith and to share the values of our faith. At the end, because of the situations of COVID, Don Rodrigo found out, for because of COVID, Don Rodrigo was buried in the ground without anything, without clothing that is out of need of the circumstances. What is the Lord telling us through this? That we arrive, we are born like that. And like Job says, we will return like that. Like newly born children. Only with the treasures that last, that remain forever which are the works of love. No one in this world will perish. Only love, the works done with love, can remain. And in this way, Don Rodrigo, not humility, poverty, simplicity, finite, I think Don Rodrigo arrived with a new clothing and with the treasures of love for all his loved ones, his family, his wives, his children, grandchildren, the poor. Today the psalm is the Magnificat of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And what is the goal of a human life lived in excellence, it becomes a magnificat. That is, that everything in us becomes a proclamation of our faith. And the power of the incarnation, the encounter with Christ in our lives. And through His mercy, our reception of the sacraments, our application of the teachings of the Church, in a concrete way in our lives, so that we, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may become a living Magnificat, that we proclaim the greatness of the Lord. And because He has done great things in us, we, by His grace and His mercy, also want to do great things for Him. And the only great thing in the Kingdom of God is love. We conclude with these words of the letter of the year that also gives us the right direction on this day in thanksgiving for the life of Don Rodrigo and reflecting in our own lives and the time that we have and the direction we are walking. Our mother founders writes, we must place ourselves, like St. Saint Saint Maximilian Kolbe say, totally available in the hands of the Blessed Virgin Mary to be what she needs and to place in her maternal hands so that we may be her instruments 
for the salvation and sanctification of souls and for the construction of our new civilization that the that cities of the heart of Mary may expand, taking many hearts to experience his triumph. Dear brothers and sisters, I think in a simple way, in our poverty, but with a lot of love, we are contemplating one of our triumphs, which is the life of Don Rodrigo Tango. Our, our dear friend, father, spouse, grandpa, grandpa, and a servant of the two hearts. All for the heart of Jesus through the heart of Mary. <laughs> 